Today is something a little different. Iron Flag is a training campaign by Baltic Dragon coming out soon for the A10C Warthog 2, covering weapons and systems along with real world procedures. This is mission 6, a large mission with convenient shortcuts to each significant segment in case the full 2 hours 30 minutes is too long for you to do in one sitting. Now there's a lot of explanation and tips contained within this mission, so we'll be skipping ahead large sections of this to keep the video going. It is Yep, that's these guys here. Okay. Now all that you need to do, and it works the exact same for each of the radios, is to set the desired frequency, select the desired channel you want to assign to it using the knob, and then press the load button. Alright, so to visualize that to you, I've actually got simple radio. So I bring the overlay in. And so we've got here our first radio, we're in man mode, and we've got a preset channel picked. I'm going to change one, so we're going to change channel one to, let's say, one, four, five. Actually, what was the tanker? The tanker was one, four, one, and two, five, two, fifty. So one, four, one, two, five, zero AM, and we'll press the load button. Now when we switch over to pre-mode, our frequency remains the same, if we switch over to a different channel, it changes. So we've changed that one for this one, um, that was under here, there's a load button. So we'll go to preset mode, and we'll pick a frequency, we've got ATIS, so we'll set that as 1. We'll go to channel 2. That is clearance, that's 2, 8, 9... Four. Then we press load, and if I go back through the other preset now, so we can see that the channel there, if I go uh, down, that's ATIS, and that's clearance, and we can go in through and change that the whole way through. Yeah, that's that bit we saw a moment ago. Indeed. Okay, so the radio's up as you'd like, and let me know when you're done. So we're going to set up the frequencies for the tower, etc. here, and I'll cut back in a moment. And the four taxi portion of your startup checklist, between your speed break and fast check, you'll see the spot for testing the MRFCS. Since we are going to be engaging it today, we will need to accomplish checks for it. Go ahead and proceed with your startup as you would, and when you're finished, we'll knock all right, we are up and running. Lead's got a good jet. Nice. Okay, again, the MRFCS check would have normally been done in the before taxi section. We skipped it and are coming back to it now so that you and I can go over it together. With that being said, let's go ahead and have a look at that process. Let me know when you're looking at the manual reversion of flight control system, ground check procedure on your knee. Yep, we are ready. Ready. Right on. As you can see in a nutshell, we're going to trim all the way. 
going to the left or right and enable manual reversion. After that, we'll make sure we have no hydraulic pressure. We'll check the rudders, aileron tabs, and we'll verify the normal and emergency trim for the elevator. The last thing we'll do is cycle the brakes and make sure our brakes work and we're holding good pressure in the accumulator. Providing that everything is good, we'll return the flight control system to normal, make sure that our hydro pressure returns to normal, we've got no warning lights, and our ailerons return to neutral. And lastly, we'll do another control check. How does that sound? Yep, sounds good. Sounds pretty long, but easy enough. Open the new board and follow the instructions. So we need to start by trimming full left or right, so let's stop trimming left. There it goes. You should see the surfaces going up and down. So they're full trim to the left. Okay. And we need to set the MRFCS switch off on the left console, that's this big one here. And watch the hydraulic pressure drop to zero. As that happens, we should see the ailerons drop. There they go. So now both ailerons are in the down position. You can confirm that externally. Down and down. We're ready to continue. Chief, ready MRFCS check. Chops are in. You're clear on flight control. Alright, so we're going to put the stick forward in a second. And that should move the elevators. So down they go. Down is down. Those down. And nose up. And about neutral. The thing to know about this is this is kind of additive, it stays where you leave it. Alright, next up is the rudder, so we need to go rudder right, then rudder left. So, rudder right. Rudder right. And rudder left. Rudder left. Center the rudder. So we need to apply full stick left, then full stick right. Now this should move the trim tabs on the ailerons, so we can have a check at those guys. And zoom in. Full left. Left tab down, right up. And full right. Left tab up, right down. And neutral. Here's the trim. Okay. Uh, what's next? Done the ailerons. Tabs are moving. Uh, elevator trim. Okay, they are clear. We need to trim nose down. Trim it nose down. Top. Ready nose up. And we'll do the nose up. Trim it up. And stop. Ready on the mark. Okay. Now the emergency trim controls are this knob here. So we need to trim our nose down. Trim it nose down. This is doing the exact same thing as the stick does. Up. Ready nose up. Nose up. Alright, brakes time. That's the pedals. And ready on the brake. When we're ready to check the brakes, press spacebar. Raj. Brakes are on. Brakes off. Brakes on. Brakes off. Brakes on. Brakes off. 
Brakes off. Brakes on. Brakes released. Stand by. Let me check the accumulators for you. Awesome. Sweet. Standing by for return to normal flight controls mode and controls check. Good stuff. Roger. Flight control's clear. All controls are clear. So we're gonna flick the switch back on and hydraulics will come back and the surfaces will return. So the pressure comes back and there they come. Now we need to check everything's come back and it's working. So we'll go external for this. Alright. Controls are clear. Up and down, left and right, and the rudder. All are looking good. Press spacebar to continue. All flight controls looking good. Okay, we have a good jet. Before we get started, we'll talk through the Takan and using it for departure along with the ILS. Now a big focus on this campaign has been the work on the ground comms and ATC, which we'll see a little bit of next. Alright then, off we go. Slot in behind the, what was it, Boar Flight. Are those tornadoes over there on the southern end of the ramp? Um, yeah, I think so. There was a uh, French B-130 to the right coming out of Thunder. I must have missed that. Yeah, I think they're getting ready for a flag, so units will start trickling in. Things are going to start getting busy around here then, huh? They might have help us. That was Tower Tusk 3 is right behind Board 2, holding 03 right at Alpha. the whole short line as bore number two takes off test three one enter and hold runway zero three right test three one enter and hold runway zero three right enter and hold runway zero three right for test Good. Brakes, 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 release. And full power. Look in 40 knots, start the rotate, and up we go. Gear up, horn silence.
and into the uh, the soup. So we need to fly the radial, which is zero three two. We are now coming in to intercept it. So let's turn to three two. Try and keep on that now that it's aligned up nicely. Carry on climbing. So like they mentioned, the uh, bar in the center shows our deviation. We need to correct it to center that. We're going to keep flying this. I think it was for 12 miles. Then we're switching over to 90 X-ray and we're flying uh, 035. Which, if I bring up the map, let's see if I can find it. Here we go. Will take us on to the next waypoint. So we're starting about here now. So we're coming up to here. That'd be 12 miles. Then we need to switch to 035 and 90 X-ray, and then we're carrying on to depart. So we are at four miles. Coming up on five miles. There we go, up through the cloud at last, we can see. It's a good patch in there, with the sun shining through. So whilst we're on it, we're going to set up uh, Zinix. This was the first waypoint. Alright, 385.4, departure for Tusk 3. There we go. And to correct a little bit to the left, to maintain our radial, we are 9 miles now. Now of course if you're struggling with the whole Takan and radial thing, they've actually given us waypoints, you can see here our next waypoint. So we flew from waypoint 1, we then changed the Takan, and then that steered us toward where waypoint 2 is. So even if you're not quite sure on the Takan, you've got something to follow through your HUD and through your normal navigation. So we're going to carry on out to waypoint 2, head on to the, I think it's Elgin Corridor. And we're going to do some manual reversion practice as we climb up to 18,000 feet. Next up, our first test of flying, preceded by a great lengthy description of using the manual reversion system. We're also quickly introduced to the use of the altitude alert system. So we've just passed waypoint 3, we're now turning toward waypoint 4. So I lose a bit of altitude, let's pull back up. And once we're facing waypoint 4, we'll start settling down the jet and we'll turn on the manual reversion. Alright then, stabilizer. Now we're going to switch on the manual reversion system. And then. Well, it's going to be interesting. So, manual reversion. Hydraulic is dropping, and control surfaces should go up. There we go, you can see we're pitching up quite hard now, it's time to pitch down. Quite a lot, actually. A bit more than that. Let's uh, ease our way back down, we'll clear that caution. In fact, don't take your hand off the stick. It really does want to go up, so we need to add some trim. Now the trim is reversed, so we actually need to trim nose up to get nose down. So let's get some inverse trim going, that's too much. So everything is very, very sensitive now. So just undercorrect, take your time with it. We'll work our way back down to 20,000 feet. We actually picked a thousand feet in the height during that. So now we're flying without the hydraulics, we are in many respects very limited we've got to be very proactive in how we fly it the <laughs> stick vibrates okay so we'll find the aircraft will want to wobble around so if I slam the stick left or right suddenly watch this then let go and slam it and let go the elevators sorry ailerons are flapping around independently because I'm not flying the aider uh, ailerons anymore I'm flying that trim tab on the surface so I'm flying the aileron on my aircraft and the aircraft is then being flown by the aileron flapping around as I fly it. 
So it all adds a bit of wobble and shake to the aircraft and if you get into trouble you just let go and it will settle itself out. The real trick is the pitch which can get a bit out of control. And I forgot to uh, press that button as we were going, so I hope that doesn't Only cause us any issue. Just remember, if it starts getting sketchy, it had a manual reversion. It yep, if we get in trouble, just pull the switch and head. we'll get power back quickly. Here we go. So I was too busy explaining manual reversion, I forgot to press the button, never mind. Should be alright. Yes, yeah, so that's kind of all there is to manual reversion, it lets you fly without the hydraulics. We still have manual control of our rudder. The trouble using the rudder though is it does unsettle the jet, so I tend to avoid that, and the elevator is kind of additive. So if you put the stick down and let go, the elevator kind of stays there in that position a little bit, and it gets very finicky, and it's very easy to overdo your motions. And of course the ailerons, they'll wobble around whenever you make manoeuvres. So that's it for uh, manual reversion really, just an opportunity to fly around and practice it. Personally I've, uh, I've used it a couple times unfortunately in combat. Alright, let's uh, settle the jet down. So we're going to switch manual reversion back off. Ah, shit. I had to switch back to normal flight control. God damn. That's a nice touch. I didn't actually no need to... We're up here to practice. Go ahead and reset back in tier 3. Let me know when you're ready to reset. That's unfortunate, so now I've got to fly back. Right. Setting back up standby. Well, never mind. We'll do that and we'll head on to the, uh, the tanker. We'll see, I just wanted to, f to uh, turn it off because I'm done practicing. But I do really appreciate them having that little... Uh, button press and the voice over for it. On our way to the tanker we get introduced to the line check and some tips for air-to-air -air refueling. Alright, we are coming in on the tanker now. I uh, don't particularly want to let go of my knots <laughs> because we are so slow to accelerate and I've got a good head of speed here at 270 that's pretty fast for a hog you can see the uh, the tanker's pulling some alpha there going quite slow for us got our nose quite a long way up so as we approach let's get the bay door opened that disables the autopilot, good to know. The ready light. And it breaks out, I may overshoot this a little bit, we'll have to see. No, we're pretty much perfect. Keep that 10 knots for closure. Oh, it's been a while since I've done this in a hog. It's not something you do very often, frankly. A bit of nose up trim. Alright, let's slot in behind the tanker then. He's off on the power. Get that neutral with speed and come over to the right. There's the weight pushing me to the right. No more power as we've fallen behind the tanker. off the power, a little bit nose down trim. Of course we would have to be in a turn as I join up. Alright, getting close to the pre-contact position. Should be good to call it here. Ready pre-contact. Ready pre-contact. Feel already starting to wobble around a bit. Now the biggest mistake people make with the A10 is trying to be too high, and that's probably where I am right now. So let's ease it down just a little bit. There comes the boom alive. So I'm now looking at the plane above me in its tail. Not the boom. Let's see if I can get this first time. Easy with the power. Nope, we missed it. I think we are... Uh, I don't know. This is where the tanker voice will be useful. 
I don't know if I'm too high or too low. If I come up... No, we were too low. Sign's come up just a bit. I can just make out the lights past the boom. It's a bit difficult to see the height guide. Oh, we are low. Contact. There we go. Contact. Oops, you don't need too much power. Leveling out of the turn. Uh, too much. Stay with it. Now, unfortunately, with YouTube compression, it's going to be hard to see it, but I can see the uh, director light on the left side of the boom there. We are one notch low. Let's bring it up just gently. Liar. And just keep working the position. There we go, perfect height. I don't know how far forward or back we are, but I can just stay where I am, hopefully. I'm trying to see the other lights. We're a little bit back now. Oops, that's what I get for trying to look. Okay, we need to reset by pressing the neutral steering because we've got the disconnect light, ready light. Now, they didn't mention we need to do that in the voiceover, so I don't remember it being mentioned. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. Contact, Contact once more. Oops, got into an oscillation there. Tanker's turning a bit. Feel the jet wanting to wobble, I need to trim her really. Trim state has changed since we started taking on the fuel. Line us back up the left. A little bit low. Let's try and work it up again. Too high. Too low. Too slow. This way gets dangerous. Try and correct one at a time, not everything at once. We're turning to the right. Thank you, tanker. Now is not the time for that. Passing to 11,000 pounds. Any moment, there we go. 11,000. Transfer complete. Whoa, okay then. Disconnect. Now, I would appreciate if the boom didn't decide to stab me. That's one of those things that I really want to see improved in DCS. We are clear. Come to the right. And I think that's it done. Are we now we're cleared on that? Let's close the door. Is two gonna join us on the tanker now? Alright, other stop AI. AAR. Alright, I've had enough fun on the boom for one day. I'm ready to head back if you are. Sounds good, man. If you haven't done so already, let's shell know we're done taking fuel and we're heading off. Yep, we got the refueling complete, so we're good on that front. Press spacebar to continue. Yeah, they know we're done. Right on. And a blackjack and let them know we're heading to Mormon Mesa for recovery. Okay, stand by. Now we should still be on blackjack, channel 6. Shell at 641 Alpha looking for recovery back to Dallas. 
Once again we're talked through setting up the ILS system and how to get on to the final test, landing in poor visibility. Let's place our one over Chris, which is the point we are on, and we are on tower. And down we come. He's back on the power now. So unlike a lot of aircraft, we don't actually have ILS on the HUD, it's all here. Alright, half a mile, we're here. Gear is coming down. Let's bring our nose down. I have a feeling I was supposed to be going down with the localizer, but never mind. Let's uh, pull back up. 3,000 feet. We're just going to hold this altitude until the beam, the uh, the bar comes back down to meet us. and gets trimmed up for landing. We are still too fast. Need to come right. Now I do hate how these gauges jump around a bit. We've gone high. Because we're still too fast. I was hoping to slow down by now. Let's get the air brakes out. Give us a little bit of power to the right. Straighten out. Alright, we are going too fast down. More up, and more up. Alright. Up, up, up. A little more power. Still low on the glide path. And they come right. Looking good now, that's a lot better. These gauges jump around a bit, I need to come right. That's gotten too low, but I can see the ground now, thankfully. And that looks like our runway. We wanted left, didn't we? Which is that one. And now we're actually too high. Not the best approach. But it's been a long time since I've done ILS in the hog. And that should be the left runway. And let's try not to bang it down like a hornet. Touchdown. Gents on the brakes. Close the air brakes. Flaps can come up. Iron Flag features 10 missions on the Nevada training and testing range, focused heavily on many of the A 10 systems and weapons. Built to be as realistic as possible within the limitations of DCS, if you're new to the hog or just looking to expand your knowledge beyond the basics, it's easy to recommend, giving you in depth knowledge of your aircraft and its systems. Be sure to check it out when it releases, which should be sometime with the next Open Beta update. I hope you've enjoyed, and take care. Alpha, looking for taxi back to Thunder. Tusk 3 1, ground. Welcome back, Tex. Alpha, Golf, Charlie for Thunder. Alpha, Golf, and Charlie, Tusk 3 1. Okay, dude, go ahead and get to the parking spot and shut down your jet. I'll see you at the debrief, okay? Yeah, 
Yeah, sure. Be careful on the approach, man. You really can't see shit. Uh-huh. Talk to you later.